Hi everyone, back again for installment number three of my tutorial videos, uh, constructing a dub mix. Uh, this this vid is about arranging in Logic Pro 9. Um, okay, so here's my arrangement. I'll give you a brief overview of the track. This is the uh, arrangement. Starting at bar one and ending up over here. Now, to get to this point, <clears throat> I've got originals at bar one of every region, every part that I've recorded. So to show you how I get to that point, basically what I've done is I've copied it to the end here. And if I select all of those and put loops on everything, let's change the end. As you can see, that would be a basic arrangement. Now, instead of <coughs> instead of copying each region over and muting, etc., etc., what I'd like to do, the way I've worked for years and years, is to convert all these to aliases, and I do that by Shift Control L. And I've now got a basic song, uh, and I can let's just start with some drums. I'll mute everything down here. So, kick drum, clap, there's some shaky bits there, and then when I'm ready, add in bass for example, etc, etc. So that's how I get to the, um, <coughs> to the point <coughs> where I've basically got a palette to work from. So, back to my arrangement. Let's just hold in a little bit. Before we get, get to that bit, now, we're doing a dub mix for, um, for, for, for clubs, for DJs, obviously. Uh, a dub mix is normally the sort of middle of the night kind of track that DJs like to play. Less vocals, more grooves, more beats, more noises, more energy, really. A um, little bit of vocal, obviously, because it's a dub mix, we want reference to the original mix. But basically, it's going to be a DJ tool. Now, I'm not actually a DJ. I toy, I dabble with DJing. Um, I've got a tractor controller. So I've got kind of a rough idea of, of what I need a track to do, i.e. To, for it to be DJ friendly. Normally, I would like at least, say, 32 bars of drums so I can mix my new track in over the existing track. I'd like to get to a point where it's going to introduce the track, build in energy, get to a point around about sort of two minutes, two, three minutes where we're at a peak and I've got my track in, I'm playing with all my DJ controls on the mixer, etc., etc. <clears throat> I then want to get to a point probably around about three, four minutes where I'm more likely going to have a breakdown. So at that point, I could then start mixing in my new track. I've then got another 32 to 64 bars after that where the track breaks down and enables me to mix in my new track. So constructing a dub mix, or well, constructing any club mix really, you need to be thinking like a DJ. What's going to make my mix really DJ friendly? So let's zoom in a little bit. The way I've decided to start is sort of really basic drums. As you can see, I've got my kick drum there. The hat part, well, the way I work, I've got hats labelled in, in blue, claps in green, uh, shaky parts in a different shade of blue, and oranges, etc., percussive bits, bass is green, and basically everything's got different colours just to enable me to instantly recognise what part is what, so I know how to mute, etc which bits I need to bring in next, and so on. From the uh, last video, you see I've got that vocal um, transition that I, I made last time. And I'm going to use that at the end of the 16 bars to get me into the next section. So... Bar 16, stack called, come 
tunes in, save for one. I'm actually bringing that in on a filter. As you can see, here we go. Low pass filter, cut off frequency down low. Rising up. We're gonna to get to a point around about bar 32 where we have a nice lithium energy. It's that nice chord transition that I've made before. This particular mix, what I decided to do, just a nice sort of neat trick that I like using. Instead of it all kicking in at bar 32, I want to hold it back a little bit longer. So what I've got is I've got the kick drum on a higher pass filter. The filter is, is quite high there. It's going to come down and towards the end of that 16 bar section, we're going to kick in at about bar 49 there. Gradually adding more elements to the drums and percussion, as you can see. So highlighting the bass in this section here as well. And here we go. A couple of things worth noting there. First of all, I've got a high string part. And what I've got... I've got a compressor and it's side chained to a part that I've copied over, which is the kick drum. And the kick drum is not coming out of an output, it's just going to a bus there, bus 8, and bus 8 is going to trigger the compressor. It's on a, a type R pumping type compressor, and it just gives that really nice sort of pumping string, adding a little bit of energy to a plain old high string part. Pretty cool. Another trick worth noting just here is what I've done. I've got my clap here and I've copied just the last part of the clap down there onto a separate track. And on this track, I've got a reverb. Um, and it's just a nice reverb clap on the fourth beat of the bar. Just makes a nice transition into the next section. And here we are, we're in. Okay, so the groove's rolling now. We've now we've got the crossfader across, and this track's in the mix. Okay, little fill there. Just to keep it interesting, really, because sometimes when you're in the middle of a club and you've got your head down dancing, as I've mentioned before, um, it's just nice, these little things that come unexpectedly sort of throw you out, a little sort of hair on the back of the neck moment, that just makes the, the mix really interesting. Let's listen again. And as you can see, all that is, is kick drum part like that. And I've muted that last beat of the first bar of that section. Just, just adding a little bit of interest, really. As you can see on the kick part here, <clears throat> I've got various regions that are labelled in different colours. Now, all that is is a different variation on the kick drum part. Now, I've, uh, I've programmed this part here. I might want to use it later in the track. And rather than wondering which particular region it was that did that nice part, I've labelled it in, in that purple colour there, and it means I can copy it over somewhere later in the track and use it again. And the different colours just relate to different types of kick, um, kick feels, basically. So here's the next one. Another nice little trick there is to just mute, mute everything for the first bar and let the change in stab chord part, we're going from this part here to this part here, um, sort of breathe on its own. Okay, moving along. Okay, 
So as you can see, I'm arranging in 16, 16 bar parts, really. Um, no, actually it's 32 bars. Is that right? No, 16 bars, sorry, 16 bar parts. So six, every 16 bars, I've got a slight change. I don't want it to be a radical change because I know DJs particularly hate radical changes happening really quickly. The groove's got to slowly unfold over the course of the track. As you can see now, I've got a vocal part that comes in here. Quite, quite subtle, really. Another little part that comes in just here. Again, a really subtle change. This is all working up towards this more sort of busy vocal part that's going to happen around the end. Down the bottom here, this is my main vocal hook, and I'm going to bring it in on a filter. Low cast at the moment. Here's my little delay licks that I wrote last time. Chopped out the vocals, put them on the delay channel. Yes. The mix is really flying at this point. And here we go, my big pad transition. opening up here. Breaking down this track, so that as a DJ you can be bringing your new track up in the mix. I've got my half pass filter going back on the kick drum again. Breaking down the drums, taking some of the elements out. For example, don't want the low tom in at that point, that's gone now. Bass line's gone. Stab keyboard part is really punctuated now. And I would say pretty much by now you've got your new track in. So this is almost irrelevant. This is just to make it really nice if you're going to play this track to the end. And there we are. That's the end of the dub mix. A couple of other nice little things to note here is this track here is is my crash cymbal track. 
And the way I write a crash symbol track, I'll quickly show you. What I'll do is I'll just play about on the keyboard, find some nice cymbal sounds. Start bar one, get into record. I want that sound in bar one. Ah. Here we go. Okay, there's my first crack. Bar nine, with a little variation on that. etc <clears throat> and I will program <clears throat> maybe five di different sort of crash fills over the first 32 bars of the track as I've done there and then what I'll do I'll say I've got these little crash pads. And then literally, I'll just copy them up the track. And then what I find happens is that you'll get later on in the track, and you realise that you haven't actually played this crash fill in, but it actually sounds quite interesting. <laughs> Crashes help, they just accent the first first part of a new section. Finally, um, I'll probably do a tutorial video on how to make these at this point, but for now, um, this comes from a sample pack, and they're just sort of sweep effects. I'm listening in solo to some of the effects. And actually what I like to do here as well is make it really spacey by putting excessive bus effects on there. Quite low down in the mix. But they just make really nice transitions to get from one section to the next. So there you go, that's a dub mix arrangement, pretty much done. I'll probably listen to this round and round many times, homing in on little bits, filing down the edges, rounding off the corners, etc. Uh, I've already done a rough balance up, I'll take it to my mixer page. You can see I've got most of the elements bust out here. Um, kick, bass, hats, snare, I'm not using a snare really. Clap, uh, stab pump. And at this point, a really a, a few sort of pretty basic plugins just to get it sound nice to work with, really to vibe with. When I get to my mix down, I'm probably going to get rid of all of these effects um, and these plugins on the buses. Get rid of all the unwanted buses that I don't need. Strip it right down to the minimum, and then mix um, bit by bit. But that's for another vid. So, there you go. In overview, we've got our dub mix, which we want to make really uh, DJ friendly. It's got to have a nice intro that a DJ can use to mix in. Uh, I've been told uh, it's probably not so critical these days because you've got, um, uh, you're not tuning so much when you're mixing in. But in the old days of vinyl, etc., where you'd be moving the pitch control on the mixer, uh, sorry, on the record deck, uh, if you started off with a high string, obviously you can imagine the, the pitch altering radically 
and it would sound really weird in the mix. So therefore, I, I try to keep um, the, the first 32 bars as unmusical as possible, really, more rhythm. So it's really, really easy to get a DJ, uh, to make it DJ friendly for, for you to use it as a mix tool. So we're going to get to, we're going to introduce all the elements bit by bit by bit. We're going to get to a payoff section. Well, it's not really a payoff. It's just a nice groove, mid groove section of the track around about here. So we're looking at about two and a half minutes. I like to get to a breakdown section around about sort of three and a half, four minutes. Um, and then from sort of four and a half, five minutes onwards, we're looking to gradually wind it down. Um, so, so we've got a nice mix out here where you can bring in your new track. Uh, that's about it really. So on to the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you soon. Cheers.